Hey guys, today we're going to be talking a little bit about imposter syndrome, a little bit about my experience with it, how I sort of overcame it or am overcoming it, and also just why it exists in the software field. I feel like it's not nearly as prevalent in other fields, but uh, it's, it's, it's pretty heavy in the software uh, industry and uh, my, my belief as to why. Before we dive into it, let's give a little uh, brief background on imposter syndrome, what it is. Imposter syndrome really refers to, at least in the development world, that you are kind of faking it, right? You are you are not really a real developer. You have just got lucky and landed your junior role, or maybe you're even looking for roles and you're thinking you're never going to get hired uh, because you are just not good enough. You're not a up to snuff right and you almost feel like you're impersonating a real developer because you're not a real developer and this is something i think is pretty common in software uh specifically but i think it, it more so tends to go for those more technical things right where you can't learn the job in a week or a weekend or two weeks right it's not like you're delivering pizzas or bagging groceries or fast food and nothing wrong with that but in those cases there's not a lot of people feeling like they're imposter cashiers, they're imposter pizza delivery drivers. Uh, because whether you've ever been a pizza delivery driver or not, give it a week, give it two weeks, you'll be excellent at the job. Uh, and uh, you can't really say the same for software development because of technical skills. And and I'm sure this is equally true when you have more other, other technical jobs that aren't just software development. And the other day, I was out to lunch with a coworker, and we started talking a little bit about imposter syndrome. And and he has uh, more years of experience than I do, and he was he was around five or six, if I remember correctly. And he was he was sharing how his previous job was the first role he ever had. He was really miserable and didn't want to be there anymore. And um, I asked him why he didn't leave, and he just said honestly. Um, I just had like some imposter syndrome where, and he, ex the way that he explained it, I really could relate. It was that I thought I had tricked them into hiring me as a developer and I was just good enough to keep tricking them and I wasn't going to go and be able to trick another company. And it's just classic imposter syndrome. But the way that he explained it like that, I really could relate, right? Where you're like, I have tricked this company into paying me money to do this thing that I may be decent or bad at. <laughs> um, not that, and it, it's, it's, it's very relatable. And I know, I know for myself, I, I dealt with imposter syndrome in the past and, and, um, still probably a little bit in the present, but overcoming the bulk of it, I think it's one of those things that as your career starts, it is a confidence thing. It is a realistic understanding of what your market value is as a developer and sort of just very on a very pragmatic level, taking an objective look at yourself, at your career, at your skill set and saying, this is what I've done. This is what the job requires. I meet all of these things on a grade of one to 10. I'm an eight. Eight's passing like and you just have to accept that's where you're at and be happy with it and not question every move you make easier said than done but that that's really what it is but i know that when i was looking for my first developer job i probably looking back on it now could have waited and got a role or could have got a role earlier and if i um waited and didn't take my technology trainer role or if i applied earlier on um you know, uh, may, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I, I don't fully comprehend where I was at at that point in time. But I do think imposter syndrome played a point in me waiting t as long as I did. And when I got my first role as a developer, I was the imposter syndrome. I've always been motivated to learn, right? And I've always been working on the YouTube channel and trying to continue my, my self-education the best way that I know how. And I can tell you when I got my first role, I was super motivated because I was like, I got to get it together. Uh, I don't know. I can't believe they hired me and I got to make sure I get up to speed. Right. And it was very stressful. It was definitely was very stressful. 
And the whole time I was at that job, I never felt like I was behind. I felt like I was doing a, a decent job for the most part once I got up and running. But I still had this imposter syndrome going on where it was kind of... And this, this could also, in my specific case, stem from the fact that I, I don't have a CS degree. And, and um, you know, that's that's one of the things that I, I think may would have maybe made me feel a little more confident in myself because again this is a confidence thing this is a a being able to understand what your value and worth is and that you have value and worth right and and if you don't which is hard uh you know i'm, I'm 30 years old right and i this is something i still struggle with right I'm, I'm fairly new to the field i'm starting my second year as a developer and uh you know my third year in the industry so I fully understand, and a lot of people are getting started much later in the industry than I am. So, for me though, it's it's always been a confidence thing, and sort of, and one of the things that boosted my confidence, and how I sort of overcame the bulk of it, because it was something I was worried about all the time, right? Um, you know, a lot of times people who are super motivated, working really hard, they're working really hard because they're really worried about something in their life, and. Um, you know, it's for me, it's always like, oh, I'm, I just want to make sure I'm good enough to be here. I want to get better. I want to be the best sort of thing. And and uh, I just want to make sure that this is for me and people, you know, I didn't just get lucky with that one job. Right. And so when I actually was looking for a second job or my, my second developer job where I work now, I had one thing that really helped with the imposter syndrome was just seeing that companies were inter interested in interviewing me. I had numerous interviews uh, online, in person, uh, phone interviews, and a lot more than I was expecting. And then on top of that, uh, at the end of this whole craziness that goes along with looking for a job, I had three offers on the table uh, to choose from, which really for me kind of sl helped chip away at a large portion of that imposter syndrome because it was like, not only did I get hired once before, I now have three people who are willing to give me jobs um, in writing, right? So not that like, yeah, yeah, we like, we really like you, Dylan, and let, let, let's, we'll get back to you. No, uh, actual, actual hard offers that had turned two down. Um, but that was something that really, for me, chipped away at a lot of the worry uh, for me, a lot of the, am I am I too, am I good enough, right? Or have I just tricked one company in? And eventually you start playing this number game where how many companies can you just be tricking? Are you just a trickster of all time, right? Where you can just trick four companies into hiring you? Um, if so, good for you. Uh, but but I, I tend to lean towards the fact, considering I work at this every day and study and all this sort of stuff, that I'm actually becoming a better developer and that I, I belong in, in this industry and I am not actually an imposter. Uh, but I know another thing that boosted my confidence when I was looking for work and kind of chipped away uh, when I was looking for my first developer job was I would see the candidates that they would interview uh, for junior level roles for the front end and I would see them fail solving basic algorithms on, on the whiteboard that I could solve and see their resumes and and could just and, and that I, I guess what I'm saying objectively speaking that I was a better developer given what I had seen of, of a couple of these candidates and when I saw a couple other people who I thought I was a better developer than be interviewed um, that was kind of the, another thing that helped me. That's, that's pretty unique to me, I would say, cause not everyone's going to be able to see other developers being interviewed and bombing. Uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, that is something, um, that does happen and it is really uncomfortable. Uh, as someone, as a developer who has bombed interviews, uh, I can tell you that, uh, the interviewer is uncomfortable. The interviewee is uncomfortable. And uh, everybody, if there's anybody else in the room, it is uncomfortable, and it is a awful situation. So, um, but a common one, uh, unfortunately. So, when it comes to imposter syndrome, guys, I want you to really think about what it is that you are scared of, what it is that that you are afraid of. Is it? Are you afraid that you can't do your job? And if so, are you doing your job? If you are, you can kind of very logically 
And that's really what it came down to for me was kind of logically thinking about, hey, what's my job? My job is to build software. Am I building the software? Yes. Am I struggling? Yes. Do developers struggle? Of course they do. Uh, are you a junior developer? Yes. Does that mean you usually, sh it's expected that you're gonna need help sometimes for senior developers? Yes, it's just start breaking this stuff down and realize like, hey, you are a developer, you're not an imposter. Maybe you're not the best developer in the world, but you are going to be getting better as you progress through your career and as you work hard, right? There are plenty of bad developers in, in the world and you, you could very well be one, but if you're working towards becoming a better developer, you're probably not. A lot of the bad developers, they, they already have two, three years experience under their belt and they're done learning and they're just gonna try and get a job with whatever knowledge they have and never get any better. And uh, that's, their, that's their choice to make. But I think from, in terms of imposter syndrome, really just evaluate yourself where you're at and think logically because it's an illogical thing most of the time where it's just a confidence thing where you have self-doubt in yourself because you're in a new environment, a new world, it's very technical and and it's it's overwhelming to a degree and um but it is familiar amongst and i think when you talk about this sort of stuff and we have a tendency as as developers as men specifically um not that women can't have imposter syndrome but this specific point as men to not share our weaknesses right not to share our faults not to share uh what scares us as men right where society has groomed us to be strong burly men we don't we don't cry we don't have emotions stone blood or ice in the veins or whatever whatever stupid analogy you guys get what i'm saying but a part of that is having an open dialogue with maybe some other developers about imposter syndrome and uh as as i did the other day with um with some of my co-workers at lunch and and a lot of times what you realize is it's not just you and you feel that makes that makes it that much better. It's like, hey, you know, this is kind of a common thing. And when you don't feel like you're alone, you start being able to look at it from look at it objectively, you might be able to overcome it a little bit easier. So I hope that you guys uh, I know it sucks, right? It, it always sucks. It's never good to lack in self-confidence or and it's it's hard to to just tell you to be more confident um and i'm not trying to tell you that but that is what needs to happen but maybe perhaps look objectively at your situation as a developer and what it is that you're trying to accomplish and what you have accomplished and looking at how the market maybe um respects that i guess based off of the fact that you have a job and that you can get a job so um it's it's rough out there uh, it's never easy to overcome the, the issues of the mind um, as much as the body. It's always hard. The hardest thing for you to do is to hold yourself accountable and to treat yourself well. And so this is one of those things. So I hope you guys, if you're suffering from imposter syndrome, um, just try, try your best to look at it objectively. And if you're working hard, you'll know you're working hard and you don't have anything to worry about. So... Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate you all. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, support me on Patreon, all that good stuff. I will see you next time. Bye. Hey, baby, what's one thing that I'm not very good at, but I do anyhow? Sex. You don't lie like that? You don't lie like that on camera? <laughs> hmm. Quick shout out to deviceplus.com. If you're interested in the latest IOTs, hacks, do-it-yourself projects revolving around Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have some great how-to guides. I, I highly encourage you to check them out, and thanks for watching.